Hi, we're uh, going to talk about my foolproof method of bed leveling and getting your perfect first layer. So there's a lot of factors involved. It might seem complex at first, but once you have it all set up and you have a process down, it's just part of your daily routine and it's super fast and super easy, but you have to follow the steps. So in order to get a great first layer, there's six basic things we really have to take care of. Number one, we've got to worry about tramming our machine. I'll talk about each one of these in a second. Number two, we have to worry that our uh, bed surface is as flat as possible. We have to take care of it to make sure it is. Number three, we want to make sure that our surface is as clean as possible. I'll show you how to do that as well. We have to be able to set our gap. We have to be able to level our machine while it's heated to its ideal printing temperature. And lastly, we want to do a live level. So let me talk a little bit about each one of those. The first thing we're going to talk about is tramming the machine. Tramming the machine, if you're a machinist, you know this very well. A lot of other people don't know the term. This is different than leveling. It's making sure that every element of the machine, excuse me, is at 90 degrees. It's perpendicular to each other or parallel to each other. This is not about the bed itself. This is about the frame of the machine. You want to put right angles, machinist angles to all of the corners while you're building the machine or do a little service and make sure your X gantry is perpendicular to your Z, your Z is perpendicular to your base, your base is perpendicular to your Y. Only with this system will you be sure you have geometrically solid models. One of the things people think is even if the X gantry is off and you level your bed to that off gantry, you could still produce good models. This is not exactly true. We could kind of see this from here, an exaggerated view. If your X gantry is off and I level my bed so that it's parallel to the X gantry, I am going to be able to print a perfectly straight up now model, but it's actually going to be trapezoidal. It's going to be skewed because my geometry is off. So the very first thing we really want to talk about is getting that machine trammed. Next one, we're going to check our bed flatness if this is your bed, we're going to put a steel ruler over the top. I'll show you that in a minute. And we're going to shine a light from the back. And we're going to see if there's a gap underneath the surface of that bed. If there is, you don't have a very flat bed. We have a problem. You probably need to shim that up. And I'll show you that on the machine in a second. One of the most important factors is setting the gap. So if this is our nozzle and this is our build surface and this is the filament, when your filament comes out of, let's say, a 0.04 nozzle, it will be a round 0.04 extruded piece of plastic. That is not ideal as your first layer. That means that it's been laid down in the air and kind of just gently touching the surface. This will not stick very well, and it will not give you a good first surface, and it won't give you a very complete and filled first surface. The ideal is where your nozzle is close enough to the bed to actually squish the first layer a little bit. That means the top and bottom are going to be a little bit flat and the whole bead is going to be a little bit wider than the 0.4. So it's going to be lower than the 0.4 and wider than the 0.4 if your nozzle is a 0.4. This is your ideal first layer. It's squished down, pushed down against that first layer and compressed and compacted. If you're too low, if the nozzle is too close to the bed, you might get where you get some dry spots or some uh, in non-continuous bead and that's where we want to actually back it off and increase the layer. Let's move over to the machine and we'll have a look at what each one of these is. Okay, so to tram our machine we want to get a machinist square or a pretty good right angle and you want to go in while you're building the machine or when you have a chance to really service your machine and put it onto each of your axes and make sure that your X gantry is 90 degrees to your Z. You want to make sure that when you can that the Y is 90 degrees to your X. You want to get this every single direction of the machine possible and make sure that everything is as right angle as possible. This is going to help incredibly the geometry of your parts. So I can't stress that enough. I like to tram the machine as I'm building it. You never have to think about it again. Now, the flatness of the bed surface is super important. Since we're talking about trying to level, 
a bead of plastic that's 0 0.04 millimeters and squish it down by half a 0 0.02 millimeter which is a hair's thickness can make all the difference in the world so in order to check if your bed is flat you want to put a straight edge across it you want to get down to eye level let's shine a light let me turn on this flashlight there we go we could shine a light through there and see if there's any gaps very slight gap in the middle. I purposely bowed this slightly to be able to show this illustration. You want to do this in every direction possible. If you do find a gap, I do recommend that you take a pen, you highlight that area, you take off your build surface, you put a little piece of aluminum foil underneath there, and then you test again until you can get that bed super flat. That's going to make a huge difference. Okay, once that we have our machine trammed our bed flat that's all the setup you have to do the one time setup on the machine now we'll talk about the daily maintenance when you are printing the next most important thing is to have a very clean bed surface so if you're printing on pure glass on pei on a wham bam sheet with pdx you want to make sure that your build surface is super clean um, if you're using hairspray and glue okay you want to maintain it with new hairspray and glue but to make sure that this is clean what i always do is I always have isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol, CVS, Walgreens, anything you want. I usually keep it in easy to handle spray bottle. I always have tons of paper towel on hand. You're going to need at least two pieces every time you do this. And some triple zero or four zero steel wool. What I'll do is I'll take off my bed, spray a little bit of alcohol on it. I'll do a quick pass with steel wool. This is between each print. It doesn't take more than a second. If I let it sit for a long time, I might want to do it again because dust collects in the air area and it'll collect on a horizontal surface. And then I clean it with alcohol. And then I do it one more time with a fresh paper towel because I don't want to transfer any of the dust or the dirt from the first one. That little bit of extra cure is going to go a long way. And then I put my bed back on the machine. And I'm ready to print. So these pieces I always have at my machine. Okay, now we're going to talk about bed leveling. Come on over here. For bed leveling, we're going to need just a few tools. We're going to need some regular copy paper. I happen to like the 28 pound thicker copy paper better. I don't have it with me right now. I just cut a bunch of strips and keep them here. You're going to want to have a pair of tweezers, so you're making sure that you've cleaned off your nozzle and make sure you have no drips there. And to level your bed, you're going to want to heat the bed to the temperature you're printing on. It's super important. So I've already preheated the bed and the nozzle up to the temperature I'm printing on. Um, I've already set this a little bit off so I can show you how I level. And I have a G-code that I use that stops at all four points over each one of the, the knobs, the adjustment screws for a couple of seconds each, gets progressively faster, and it keeps on making circles around until I get this right. Um, it's really a good idea to have a G-code that does something like that. I have mine for the Ender 2, for the Ender 3, for the CR10, CR10 400 and 500. Um, I put those up on the various groups. I'll probably supply links to those for you guys. And you can always take my G-code, open and text edit, and change the X and Y points to adapt for your machine. Um, We'll go ahead and run it. Once you have a G-code, you put it on your SD card, and you run it like you would a regular G-code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just print from card my G-code, in this case, up. Oh, refresh. My G-code in this case is Ender 3 level. OK. And it's already preheated. Now this is just going to home. I get my paper ready while it's homing. I generally put it right underneath so I don't have any drips of plastic. I'm kind of using the paper to collect it off. Now one of the goals that you want to do is you don't want to move any one knob too fast. Because if you move it too aggressively and the other three knobs are already at a plane, you can risk bending your own bed. So you want to move all the three knobs, all four knobs, excuse me, in a very progressive fashion and I want to feel that there is grip right now there's no grip so I'm going to 
move the knob until there's grip. If there's too much grip that I can't push it underneath without it bending, it's too much. That's kind of fine. I could feel the tension. <clears throat> I don't want to put any tension on the bed while I'm doing that because there are springs. I would compress it. That's too loose. That's too tight. There it is. And I'm going to go around all four corners and I'm going to keep on repeating this process until I'm not touching any corner at all. And the reason why is because Every time you adjust one corner, you're kind of setting the other ones off. So we want to try, try to get them all generally in the general correct vicinity and then fine tune. And then we want to, this is a little bit too tight, so I'm going to back this one off. Okay. Now it's going to do a center verification. I don't adjust when it's at the center. It's just to see how flat the bed is and how the level is. Very nice. Now I want to go around and I want to fine tune. Once that I could do a full circuit of all five points without touching a knob, then I could stop. That's perfect. There's a little bit of drag on the paper. I can get it to go underneath and it doesn't bend and fold. It's like a perfect height. This is too tight. I'm going to back off a little bit. That's very nice. A little bit loose. I'm going to go up a hair. There we go. A little bit tight. There we go. Okay, so the next one should be the good one. I touched a couple of knobs there, so I'm going to go around again. I would say be patient. Don't stop your process too early. Go around all of the points until you're not touching a knob. Once you've done that, you've successfully printed well. The nice thing about my G-code is it speeds up every, every circuit that it goes around. It starts off, I think, at five seconds per corner, then goes to four seconds, then three, then two. Because now if you have to touch anything, it's very little. That's a slight hair too much. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to stop it even though I should go around one more time because I do want to show you the live level. I can stop the print like any other print. <clears throat> now what is live level? Live level is whenever you're slicing your model, I like to print the skirt at as much of a distance as I can away from the model so it gets close to the edges. So my model's here in the center, I try to print like a 12 millimeter, 14 millimeter skirt. I'll do one, two or three passes of the skirt one layer only. You don't have to build it up in the air. And the reason for the skirt is as it's printing, I'm looking at that bead. It should look wider than the 0.4 millimeters extruded bead. It should be flat top and flat bottom. And it should be consistent all the way around. And it gives me the opportunity to slightly adjust on the fly. The wider this is, as it's printing that skirt layer, the more that I can see if one end is a little bit too thin, one end is too fat, if there's some dry areas, and adjust on the fly. So I'm going to go ahead and send the print a file. Let's see. Here we go. This is just a round disc. And it has a skirt around it. I'm just making sure that I have a clean nozzle. Um, if you like to have a handy toolkit, I'll, I'll give the link to my toolkit and my different tools here as well. I always keep the tweezer around so I can grab any excess material. My own Gico does a wipe on the left y-axis. Okay, now it's printing the first layer of the first strip of the skirt. You can see it's pretty nice. It's very flat top. It's definitely wider than a regular extruded piece. There's no bare spot, so it's not too close. This is a little bit thin, so I'm going to just crank that a slightly closer. Slightly closer. Maybe the right side is a little bit thin. Left back could be a, a hair closer. Okay, and I'm just talking about the very, very minimal movements. Okay, now it's actually printing the part. What we'll do is we'll pause and we'll come back as it's completing the first layer and we'll see if we actually did get a wonderful first layer.
Okay, it's just finished its first layer, starting on the second layer. And as you can see, that is a nice, smooth, closed first layer. All of the pieces are flat topped. They're pretty much all running together. There are some little gaps. I might want to set my extrusion width a little bit tighter on this. But that's a pretty beautiful first layer. We can come back when it's time to pop this off and have a look at the effect of the layer against the build surface. See how nice that came out. Okay, the print's finished. Let's have a look at the first layer. So I'm just going to pull off the Wham Bam Flexi Kit. Flex it two times. Look at that first layer. Pretty flawless. Top layer, first layer. There we go. Thank you.